Hi there, everyone. Six years ago, I stood here in the Royal Society with head librarian Keith Moore, and we talked about H.G. Wells, the famous writer, who, although he wasn't a scientist, we think maybe secretly harboured a desire to become a fellow of the Royal Society. And that never happened. He didn't get elected, even though there was this so-called Statute 12 they could use to get him in. It didn't happen. But we showed you this book, and this book lists all the people who were candidates at that time to become fellows of the Royal Society. But the problem is we weren't allowed to open it, because you're not allowed to open it until 80 years have passed. You can't open it, Brandy. We can't show it to you. <laughs> we can't, because it's confidential. Hang around. Six years, yeah, we'll, we'll open it up for we'll, you. We'll still be making videos in six years, surely. Definitely. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, we are still making these videos after six years, and that means, Keith, we can finally have a look at this list of candidates. Well, first of all, find out if H.G. Wells is in the list. You predicted he might not be, because this might just be science candidates, mm -hmm. but we're going to find out. Why not? Let's, oh. let's take a look. All we're right. allowed to We're now. allowed to at last. Ah, here we okay. go. Now, you kind of predicted this might be a little bit boring and disappointing. Exactly. So we have <laughs> elections here in 1941 okay. from 1940s candidates. Wells was 41, so he would have been elected in the year 42. So here we go. We have Wardlaw, Watson, White. He's not there. He's not there. So what we do have is just a list of names of eminent scientists and it says here that we see the word suspended. That's right, so there'd be a candidate certificate, so there'd be a citation why they should be elected a fellow of the Royal Society, there'd be a proposer, a second, and a list of names. The fellows would sign it, and the certificate would be suspended in the meeting room so that they could do that. So suspended just means hung up in the room. Hung up for people to sign, Okay, yeah. and some of these people became fellows? And some, some of did. them didn't. Yep. The mystery of H.G. Wells's possible candidacy doesn't end here because Keith has found something else that's going to shed some light on the matter. Isn't that right, Keith? Well, we know if he's not on the candidates list, he's a Statute 12, an honorary fellowship election for services to science. So council would have had to approve it. So he must be in the council minutes. Well, funny you should mention council minutes. Look what we've got here. Council minutes, Royal Society. Let's find out what happened with H.G. Wells. Was he even considered? Here we go. What do we got? So these are the minutes for the 5th of March, 1942. Minute nine here. Consideration was given to the selection of persons for election under Statute 12. And the names of the Right Honourable Lord Hankey and Mr. H.G. Wells were proposed. He's at least made it into the the council meeting, his name's been put That's forward, right. Statute 12 for services to science, even though you're not a scientist. But it just says he's been proposed along with this That's hanky right. chap. Well, so we've got, we've got two candidates here. Who's going to make the cut? Who's going to get elected? It's a race. There can only be one. Really? Yeah. What, one per year, is it? Or? Yeah, oh, usually. Right. Yeah. Okay. At this, at this stage. Just a little side note here. Mm -hmm. Minute 10, candidates for foreign membership are listed here as well. Mm -hmm. Enrico Fermi, Ernest yep. Lawrence, two of my favourite scientists on the yep. list there. Yep. So that's a nice little sidebar. Some, some good names, yeah. I mean, they, they have to get in those two, but... You'd have thought, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yes. All right. Anyway, what's happened with Hankey versus Wells? So this is the meeting of 23rd of April, 1942, and admission of new fellows and election under Statute 12. With reference to Minute 9, 5th of March, 1942, further the consideration was given to the selection of persons for election into the society under Statute 12. And the name of Morris Pascal Alas Hankey, Baron Hankey of the chart, was proposed. Hankey gets in. I know. Wells didn't make it. That's... There's no, no mention as to why or vote numbers or anything, just, just quietly he's fallen by the wayside. Yeah, it's, it's tragic. You, you, you instantly have to reach for your hanky at that point. Wow. Well, you? You'd think the person who invented the handkerchief probably does deserve to get into the Ross. Yeah, that's not why he got in. <laughs> who was Hankey? Who was this baron who knocked off H.G. Wells? He was a senior civil servant. He had a long Whitehall career. He was in the Privy Council. Just before the war started, he becomes a member of Chamberlain's War Cabinet. And he continues working on the scientific advisory panel to later Churchill. And in 4041, one of his tasks is to start off what became the Manhattan Project. So kind of ironic, Wells predicts the atomic bomb in one of his novels, The World Set Free. And the election eventually goes to Hankey, who helped to usher in 
the atomic bomb. All right, so for all those people who were barracking for H.G. Wells and hoping that he'd get in the Royal Society, it was Hanky that knocked him off, unfortunately. But just so you know, people, we do read the comments under these videos, and we know you've all been talking to us. We saw you saying, open the book, you can open the book. Keith was as good as his word. He's opened the book for us. It was a, it was a little bit disappointing and boring, if I'm honest, and H.G. Wells wasn't in there. But we have shed some light onto why he didn't get in. Pipped at the post by Hanky. I didn't know the magnetic field did that, like fluctuated so rapidly. Oh, and there's another scale here on the side. East, west, and some numbers on there. I assume that's the strength of the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. I like this because it's just very, very sculptural. It's gorgeous. Um, it's lovely, isn't it? It could be a piece of contemporary art. And this dates from the 1840s. Do you know what it's made from, Keith? I think it's mostly ceramics. So it's plaster work with some kind of coating over the top of it. 